Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Early Career Academic. On this channel, I explore goal setting, productivity, and academia. Um, this video, we're going to focus on the word of the year for 2022. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you know that I set a word of the year typically for both the calendar year, but also for the academic year. Um, and today we're going to, we're actually on the January page of the um, Passion Planner Weekly. And um, it is the medium size and it's the marble cover. And I'm looking specifically at the space of infinite possibility that Passion Planner offers you every month. I've done different things, different um, times of year for this. Um, often I'll do like a mini vision board for the month. It's kind of fun to do the little doodles for that. I think I have an example of that um, in December and then also in October. Um, but this month, we are going to, um, I'm going to put my word of 2022 here in the middle, and then I'm going to brainstorm some ways to make this word inform my year. Um, so how I see it potentially affecting my life in the year of 2022. Um, so the word that I have chosen is brave. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about how I arrived at this word. I, I actually was talking with my therapist recently and I asked her, you know, how could I be more accepting of the reality in front of me, which is that it'll, it's very unlikely at this point that John and I will have a baby of our own uh, naturally, conceived naturally. And so we have other options, of course, to, uh, to, to grow our family. And um, we are pursuing adoption, which you know if you've been watching this channel. But I still feel really, um, I, feel, I feel really reticent about it. Um, not, because I'm, not because I object to adoption in any way, shape, or form. It's just after so many years of struggling, trying to conceive naturally, half of which have been spent in a pandemic, um, it's really hard to kind of look at another route uh, such as adoption, which is going to be potentially just as fraught, just as long, you know, just as hard, uh, it, if not in um, the same way, but in different ways. Um, it's kind of like trying to climb a mountain, being told you can't get to the top, and then someone else saying, well, just climb the other mountain over there. I mean, you're just tired. You're tired of climbing, and the last thing you want to do is climb another mountain, but that's what we're doing. We're climbing another mountain. Um, and I just want to feel better about it. I want to feel like I am, you know, I'm doing what's best for me. I'm doing what's best for my family. I'm doing what's best for my future family. I want to feel better about it. And so I was talking with my therapist and she was like, um, you know, we, we kind of thought we'd pick it up in the new year again. I'm not sure if she had a lot of concrete things to tell me about how I can come to a place of acceptance and not just acceptance because that kind of has a negative, to me, a negative connotation, but like excitement for this. You know, I think it's been really hard for me to, to not only accept it, but to be excited about it. And I was thinking about it more, um, since that conversation and you know she she did ask me you know what why aren't you looking forward to it and there's just a lot like it's extremely expensive to adopt a child um it's it, you know it's very there's also uncertainty right like you have no idea how long it's going to take we could get lucky and you know a birth parent could pick us right away but it also might take many more years um you know and again after after dealing with this for so many years already um it's just hard to think about that um um and that you know the rest of it is is really not as important as maybe those two things but it occurred to me that i'm afraid i'm afraid of it taking forever i'm afraid of spending all this money that we thought we were going to be able to save for our children you know, to take care of them when they're here, as opposed to getting them in the first place. 
um, you know, I'm just afraid. And I realized that between um, the PhD and the struggle we've had trying to have children, um, I have just like curled up in my little shell, right? Like I have just become afraid of everything. I've lost kind of some of the confidence I remember having in my 20s. And the crazy thing is I've done so many great things in my life. I found a partner that I st still blows my mind that we are so good together. I have this amazing job. I finished a PhD. Like, I'm a capable person who makes good decisions for the most part, but I still feel like right now, like I just, I'm scared at all to, to, to accept what's in front of me, but also to feel excited about anything. So at first I was like, acceptance was the word. And then I'm like, Ugh, it just feels so like limited, limiting, right? Like I don't want to just accept it. I want to, as I said, I want to be excited about it. I want to make, you know, choices that I'm excited about. And then I thought maybe bloom, you know, that's like a pretty popular word of the year, bloom where you are planted, right? Um, so again, kind of acceptance, but a little more uh, fun sounding, like a little more thrive and less survive. Um, but that still wasn't it. And also that's a phrase, not a word. And I was afraid of just putting bloom because it, to me, just the, just the word bloom isn't exactly capturing everything that I was going for. So then I came to brave and I thought maybe that's it. It's not just acceptance, but it's being brave and to see these choices as bravery, I think will help me. Um, I think it will help me um, move pa move to accept and past acceptance to the point where I'm looking forward to it because I feel like if I could overcome my fear to be brave in spite of the fear I have then I will be able to like move past um, you know move past the reticence so that's my thinking anyway we'll see how it goes let me know in the comments if you picked a word of the year, if so, what it is and what you're hoping it will do for you. And that's kind of like the second part of this video, which hopefully I have time to do. I'm actually about to leave, um, but if not, I'll film it later. Um, so yes, what will this word do in the new year or how will I try to incorporate this word into my life? because I think it's not enough to just set the word. Like I've done that before where you set the word and I literally forget about it until I'm going to do goal setting for the next year. And I'm like, oh yeah, that was my word. And also if you've watched this channel, um, you know that I can be a little superstitious about setting words of the year because in the past it feels like they backfired. Like the last word I had was hope. And in that year, I lost all hope of us ever conceiving naturally. Um, so I am a little superstitious about this, hoping that I don't just become, you know, more scared, <laughs> hoping that it actually helps me be more brave is the goal. Um, so how, what are some ways that I can be more brave or cultivate bravery in my life? That's kind of the next step of this exercise. So I'm just going to kind of shoot some, you know, little arrows out from this word, um, and write some things down as they occur to me. Now, I haven't done any prep for this, so I'm sorry if this video takes a little while and if um, it's not as cohesive as it might be if I had done any prep. Um, I think, you know, so some things I can do to feel more brave is submit the adoption application. I think maybe having submitted it will feel will feel um not like i'm at the bottom of the mountain looking up but maybe like i'm halfway there i don't know i'm hoping that's what occurs and um so it's possible this is kind of one of those things where you're like smile until you really feel it type thing like this is something we're gonna do this is a brave action it doesn't feel brave to me right now but maybe i'll feel differently about it once we've submitted it um, I think maybe continuing with my therapy, um, which really probably shouldn't 
for most people, I think, be a brave action. It should be more normal than it is. But for me, it's brave because I am kind of a, in spite of everything I share with you guys on this channel, um, I have trouble being vulnerable and opening up. So I think um, continuing to see my therapist to um, think about these things is a brave action and something that will help me be more brave in other areas of my life. Um, this is like definitely less, um, probably less important than these two, certainly, but making academic videos. Because I get intimidated about um, creating academic advice for people because, again, like, coming from a place of insecurity and fear, it feels like I haven't been around long enough to have advice for people that's helpful. It's really hard to give advice in academic circles because everyone's so smart and at the same time, you know, academia is struggling as, a, as an industry at the moment. So a lot of people, um, you know, can they can be kind of persnickety about you, you giving advice because everyone's circumstances are so different. Um, but I'd like to think the advice I have, especially coming from the background I particularly have in academia, which is definitely not traditional, um, would be helpful. So I think I think I just need to take the plunge to like feel that bravery. Um, to make that brave move will help me maybe be more brave in more hard things, you know, like harder, more um, more complex, more dynamic things if I can take these small steps here. Um, I think another thing that I could um, that would like help me cultivate bravery, practice bravery, is setting better boundaries. I'm actually pretty good at setting boundaries around work um, and around my teaching, like pretty good at that. I will say like I often take on a little bit like too many projects sometimes I get um I can bite off more than I can chew and it's partly because of the way academic academia is structured where you like you apply for things sometimes months sometimes years ahead of time not knowing if you'll get them and then sometimes you can have a pile up situation and all of a sudden you're like why did I sign up for so many things um but I'm pretty good at the boundaries there I think I could use better boundaries with family in particular um, family in-laws yes I think um, I think being more honest with them when they are talking about things or talking about things in a certain way that is upsetting to me and not just like forcing a smile um, or maybe just not even like you know drawing pre pre-engagement boundaries where you know I am I'm not feeling so um, so stressed out to um, to hang out with them. So I think just being a little more honest there would be helpful to me to help me. Um, and also, again, practicing bravery in these smaller contexts might help me do it in more large contexts. Um, I think another way I can be brave is um, by being honest with those who are closest to me. So early on when we lost our baby in July, it was really hard for me because, you know, when people, I, I, I talked about this in a different video, but when you go through a loss, when you're feeling grief, if you're feeling it, the people in your life are also feeling it. They're either feeling it directly because it's a similar loss to them or because you and or because you are grieving. And when you turn to them to help, sometimes it's like, again, going back to kind of a mountain analogy, it's like you all broke your legs trying to climb a mountain and now you need to get down the mountain, but everyone can't help each other because they're, they're all equally broken. Um, so you need, that's why therapy is helpful because you need someone whose legs aren't broken to carry you down the mountain. Um, so there were some tense like moments early on when we first had that loss because it was us trying to navigate with each other, um, our pain, right? Um, 
and but what ha- what happened was that I, um, is we I became afraid to um, to really tell them when I was hurting because again like <laughs> you're all going through this grieving process you're all your legs are all broken the last thing you want to do is lean on someone whose leg is also broken so you don't want to break it more um, but now like now that some time has gone by, you know, six months. Um, I think the the downside of not um, bringing it up for fear of hurting them is, you know, you're still like your leg's still broken, but you're pretending it's not. So that's not good either because you're not supposed to walk on a broken leg. So that's definitely one way that I could be more brave is being honest with the people in my life when I am feeling sad and when I am incapable of, um, you know, showing up uh, as though my leg isn't broken type thing. So that's definitely a different one there. Um, You guys are going to laugh because so many planning videos are the opposite thing of this, I feel like. But for me... Spending money is an act of bravery. Um, I am an incredibly frugal person. It comes out of many years of being an adjunct teacher, not having any funding in my program, working like five jobs at once, trying to make ends meet. Um, I just, it takes a lot for me to want to spend money. And thankfully my husband is not that way. And so I find that we, we have a good balance. Um, but I, I let this get in the way of living my life. Um, I can let it get in the way of them. I'm better than I was, but I could be better about spending money in a way that helps us be more brave in other areas. Um, so I need to just like find a way to overcome the fear I have of overspending or not having enough or facing scarcity and really just like take the plunge, you know, make the decision. Um, so that is something that is a way I can practice bravery. Certainly, um, spending money on things that I know are good for us. Like I want to take John to visit my friend in Germany and the, the cost of plane tickets scares me. Um, I mean, pandemic times being what they are, that's part of like, I had a handy excuse for not like taking the plunge but hoping, fingers crossed, that the pandemic isn't with us all of next year and we're able to go visit my friend in Germany and in which case we'll wanna obviously spend some money on that. Same thing with the adoption. Again, spending money is an act of bravery for me personally and that is one way that I can help um, be more brave in the new year. Um, And I think if this is like a similar word for you and you guys are trying to think about how to um, be more confident or be more brave, is like, what are you afraid of? You know, Um, (laughs) bravery, as they say, is not the absence of fear, but rather that you just go for it in spite of that fear. Um, And I think maybe I'm most afraid of I'm trying to think. I'm like most afraid. I think I'm most afraid of failing, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure if that's it. In in not having a child, I'm afraid of being alone, certainly. But not just that, but not being able to be a mother it's just a huge part of my identity that I always assumed was going to happen. But I have like an otherwise great life. Um, I actually have realized a lot of my dreams. I'm in a great marriage. I have a great job. Um, I don't know. Perhaps it's just being enough to myself. I'm not sure how exactly this is going to translate in a practical sense, but thinking about enoughness, maybe contentness, is something that I could reflect on more. Um, 
I don't always have to be striving, you know, and I think academics, we're often in that strive trap, partly because of the way academia is set up. Um, but, and women perhaps feel this too, a little bit, where um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. So maybe thinking about what is enough um, so that I don't always feel like I need to be doing something to be better or to overcome every obstacle life throws my way. I mean, that's just, that's just not fair to me. It's, it's not, and it's not fair to you either, those of you who are listening. Okay, um, so I do need to wrap it up because I am going to visit uh, my mother today and my sister because she's going back to college soon. I hope you've enjoyed watching this process. I hope that you have um, thought of a good word for your year, if that's something you do, um, that it gives you the courage and strength to um, to meet your, you know, to realize your dreams, whatever they are. Please leave a note in the comments if you like this video. Please give it a, a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and stay tuned. I have some more um, goal setting videos coming up soon, as well as some academic advice videos. Um, please feel free to share with your networks. And thanks again for watching.